Hi everyone, welcome to Tom's Man Shed. Okay, first of all, apologies to any regular viewers or subscribers because I was hoping the next video that I'd make, i.e. this one, would be one on a pressure washer from Aldi's. At the end of my last video I uploaded just three days ago about a uh, outside storage box from Lidl's, I mentioned at the very end of that that on Sunday yesterday that in the leaflet for Aldi was going to was a pressure washer for 49.99 50 quid with a really good spec five year warranty and including a patio washer you know the the round thing where the it spins around on two jets to, to do your patio they're usually 20 ish quid anyway and I was hoping to get one of these uh, pressure washers to do a review of it and then give it to my daughter so I got up early for me on a Sunday anyway to get to Aldi's at 10.15. It opens at 10 o'clock. I went to the Fleetwood one first. I prefer that because it's parking's easier. And I went in. He said, no, they all went. They immediately sold out. They were queuing up at the door this morning and this all sold out, all four of them. That's all Aldi had allocated to Fleetwood, four. So I thought, right, I'll drive to Cleveland's, which isn't too far away. Went in there exactly the same story they all sold out within minutes queuing up at the door before they opened they'd been allocated six so he says go to bispam one that that usually gets the most allocations drove to bispam this whole thing the three stores it's about a 15 mile round trip between the, the two the three and back home so it's not too bad went to bispam same story there they'd been allocated nine and they all went and this is only like 11 o'clock ish now we're just after 11. So that was it. Ridiculous that they only allocate that many to the stores, particularly four, crying out loud. It's obviously going to be a very popular item. They should have allocated more, but anyway. So if they ever do come back in stock, it's not like I'm often going in Aldi, so I'm not going to really notice it. I'm, I'm in Littles every Thursday, but Aldi, I probably won't notice it, but I'll set the feelers out, and if my daughter's in there and she sees one, in weeks or months to come i'll get one so i will do a review on that so end of waffle for this but th so this review is just it's not a review at all and it's going to appeal to just a very very limited amount of people i'm only doing it basically for the people on the facebook page the grinnell scorpion owners club now Many of my regular uh, subscribers will know that I have a kit car called a Grinnell Scorpion. Fantastic little thing. Here's a picture of it here. As you can see, absolutely brilliant. 27 years old now. It went in for its MOT last week, passed. But there's been a knocking noise coming from the alternator. Now, it's very awkward because, oh, and by the way, if you can hear a knocking noise yourself now, it's the 3D printer in the background. Hopefully that the mic will be cancelling it out, but if you can't hear it, apologise that I'm printing something. Yeah, this knocking noise coming from the alternator, which is at the very back of the engine, in the car, it's dead, dead easy to get at. In the bike, you've got to take all sorts of things to remove the alternator. But as you'll see shortly, it's just held on with three 6mm Allen bolts. But last year, after my overheating incident on the motorway, and again, if you click up here, there's a full report on how I fitted a new radiator fan for that after I broke down on the motorway and the RAC, absolutely useless RAC, left me abandoned there for eight hours on just got off the motorway. I had to make my own way home at one in the morning. But again, that's another story. Check up here for that. But sort of since then, I've been hearing this like knocking noise coming from the back of the alternator. But the trouble is, like I say, it's very, very intermittent. It can sometimes go minutes, 15, maybe 20 minutes without hearing it. And then you hear it. And it's, but when it does do it, it's quite a disconcerting clunk. And I thought, oh, God, you know, what is it? I didn't know it was the alternator at first. I thought it might be something inside the engine. But it was quite horrible. So I took it to a, a good friend of mine. Peter Allen, who's a fellow Scorpion owner, and he's brilliant at anything mechanical. He's sorted all sorts of problems out for quite a few members, and he's built a couple of Scorpions himself anyway, so he, he knows them pretty much inside out. But as expected, when, he was, when I was at Peter's, 
it wouldn't do it. When you want it to do it, it won't do it. So we, we, we took it off anyway, and it felt, felt okay. We tried another one on, and, and obviously it wouldn't do it, a, a new one he had. So on my way home, it started doing it. I hadn't left his house about five minutes at some traffic lights, and I could hear his knocking again. I thought, God, God. So I thought I'll investigate further myself. So I took the alternator off, and I took it to a place that I got the radiator fan from. Now, this place is fantastic. It's called, I'll put it on the bottom here of the screen, Ribblesdale Auto Electric. So I'll put the postcode and, and the phone number. And they are brilliant. Quite a sort of small place in, in Ribblesdale in Preston. But when you go in, you get the feeling that it's a really good traditional old school place. You can see the guys in the background on long benches and sort of brown work coats repairing all this stuff and you get the feeling the guys there really really know the stuff they rebuild alternators they re rebuild motors they were the cheapest source for a new spare motor for my radiator fan like i said last, last that i got last year so i carry that as a spare now and they, they really are helpful guys so i took it in there and he just and like i said i spin i spin the front and it felt fine to me he spins it he goes Oh yeah, your rear bearing has gone. I says, oh, oh, great. Well, because that's what I wanted. I actually did want it to have a fault. If it had said it was perfect, that would have meant this knocking was somewhere else. But he says, no, your rear bearing's gone. I can feel it. He says, put your finger on the back of the housing, the plastic housing, and I, I'll move it each way. Can you feel that knocking? And I couldn't. I couldn't feel a thing. It felt as smooth as silk to me. But. He said, yeah, it's definitely gone. I says, right, great, I'll leave it with you. And he says, yeah, your front one feels all right, but it's daft not to put a front one on as well. I says, yeah, just do whatever it needs. Like. So I left it with him, at, uh, and I repeat this in a bit when I'm showing it in my hand, at something like one or two o'clock on a Thursday afternoon, and he said, right, it'll probably be next week when it's ready. 9.30 the following morning, Friday morning, he rung me up to say it's ready. 55 quid. And it needed a, uh, the rear, it was the rear bearing, that one, that had gone. And he said this front one, he could have reused it. Front one's still quite good, but he's put a new front one on as well. And where the rear bearing goes in, there is like a plastic housing inside the shell. That had a crack in it as well. He's put a new one of them on. So a new plastic holder, two new bearings, all done 55 quid in less than 24 hours so absolutely superb service that's the main reason i'm doing this video to recommend this place if you ever need anything like that doing but i thought i'd put it together just to show you how the alternator comes off as i mentioned in it I, unfortunately i didn't film it with the banging happening i should have done so you could have heard it but i didn't think i was going to be doing a video about it so you'll only hear it after when it's running with no uh, no banging noise and again as i mentioned in the video they're not the quietest of engines they're a bomb proof engine the k1100 uh, bmw engine off the k-series bikes they're well known for doing many many miles and being pretty bomb proof but they are a bit sort of rattly in places particularly at tick over once you get a few revs on them it's fine. When you, when I rift it up, I never heard the knocking. It was only when I was sat at traffic lights and things like that. So that's why I've done this video. Hopefully it's of some use to the Scorpion owners only. As I said to me, regular viewers were wanting a, a tool review or a gadget review. You might as well turn off here because it's just very, very specialised. So let's get into it now. I filmed this first bit before, obviously, before I put the alternator on. That's why I'm in me work gear my fleece top instead of a, me presenting a video gear like this so let's get straight into it now and you'll see the alternator off in me hands and you'll hear me spinning it you, you won't hear any grinding noise again you know if i hold it to the mic here you can't feel any grinding noise but you can feel a bit of play in it laterally uh, but also in this bit apart from the alternator i do mention the battery because all this may be of interest to people who haven't seen some of the other scorpion videos i mentioned the uprated battery i did physically bigger battery which will still fit that would definitely recommend 
and also at the very very end of the video when i've done all the alternator bit i go into the extra temperature gauges that are fitted and an extra voltmeter gauge that i went through in more detail in our own respective videos check out the links and things i've put throughout this for them but i thought i'd, I'd tag them onto the end of this because it may be some interested like i say people who haven't seen any scorpion ones so let's get into it now starting with the alternator and then uh, mentioning the battery and the temperature gauges so yeah just got back from ribblesdale autos well ribblesdale auto electrics in preston fantastic service uh, so that's the alternator in case you're wondering what it looks like i'll show you in a minute what goes in there the cush drives when i took it off this felt as it does now as smooth as silk to my mind it's it's funny like, like like i'm doing now and i says oh, it feels really smooth he says well it is at the front he says the front's all right but i can feel the back bear and he's going he says put your finger there on the back and he and he moved it back and forth he says can you feel that i says no i couldn't feel a thing but he could so i was glad there was something wrong with it so it's not an instructional video this it's just a, a short little thing just for grinnell scorpion owners really like i say it's not telling you how to put the bearings in because i haven't a clue you'd need bearing pullers and all that. that's why i took it to be done but they are the two bearings now again to my mind this front one feels nice and smooth it doesn't spin for forever like some sort of bearings but it feels smooth there's no grinding noise i'll put it up to the mic So right next to the mic, if there's any grinding, you'd hear it. Nothing. And the rear one, rear one is definitely like dirtier looking, blacker. But again, to my mind, it feels sort of smooth. Not as sort of like, doesn't spin as freely as the other, even though the other didn't sort of spin freely from one. But again, I can't feel any grinding. Again, I'll hold it to the mic. No grinding whatsoever. Feels dead smooth. I can't feel... Oh, hang on. Yeah, pulling it backwards and forwards and like that, I felt a bit of play in it then. Yeah, so uh, but very, very small. But that obviously can make all the difference. He could feel that with it in now this bit here just in case you're interested this is how it mounts to the corresponding bit from the back of the engine so there's like a a triangular splined thing comes out of the back and these are called cush drives because they they cushion the shock and they're like shock absorbers they go in there like that and then the three splines of like the triangle go down there i'll show you in a second on the, on the car in there and in there and when it starts up the engine obviously shock loads there's no metal to metal contact sometimes when these are worn it can do clunking evidently I, it, I don't think it'd ever do a metallic clunk because even with worn ones of these there's no metal to metal contact the metal blade is in the middle of these and they have got some improved ones of these so yeah here we are on the motorworks bmw parts site i've had loads of stuff from the, these they, they do give a really good service um, but these are the cush drives and as you can see they are a slightly different shape than the existing ones are like egg shaped these are more flat sides here and it says in the description this is an upgrade part with better quality rubber and more precise fit than the originals extending its service life please note this is for one cush drive rubber for a full set you will require three of these this is just one part the lot held together by a bit so there's like two bits per one part so yeah if we added make it three there and add the basket got a basket 37 pounds eight pence so uh and i don't know whether there'd be there'd probably be postage on top of that as well so uh, 
Yeah, 37 quid. These aren't showing any sign of wear on these contact faces. It looks pretty good to me. If they were cheap, I'd bung a new set in. Like I say, if it needed them, no problem, I'd get it. But I don't think it does. It seems a pretty, they seem pretty good order, these. And uh, that's it. So I'm going to put it on the Scorpion now. And then I'll film it. I should have filmed it before. Uh, I never thought I'd be, I'd be doing this video, but should have filmed it before making this knocking noise because it has to go like sometimes 10, 15 minutes before you hear it. But I'm going to put it on now and give it a good 15 minute run or so on tick over. And uh, hopefully it will not do any clunks. So I'll show you that now. Okay, so you can see here the three flanges I spoke about earlier. Three sort of like blades and once it's in place they go each side of that like that you get the idea and then it uh, as the engine turns as this turns around it goes against these rubbers not the metal so it's held on you're alternate with three Allen keys. I'll put the size of the Allen key on screen. I think it's a, a six mil. So this one down here is the only awkward one you've to get at. You've got to use quite a long extension bit to bring you behind the chassis. And so here we have the alternator. So I'm going to put them rubbers in now. So you can see the rubbers are in, ready to engage it over that. Battery of course is disconnected. And yeah, it's just a matter of sort of lining it up, thrutching it around, trying to squeeze your finger in here and to turn the thing. But once you've got it in, you feel it go in there. And that's right up against there now. So put these in, just spray a bit of oil on these, so like I say it's just this bottom one under here that's a bit awkward to get at. So yeah, I've got this extra light rigged up for you to see, but basically, if you put your the bolt on the end of your, your Allen key on your socket, and you've probably got to hold a torch under here, like here, to, to see right through to the hole at the back of here. Like I said, it is quite awkward, but you can do it. Sorry if my head's getting in the way here. Yeah, I can't look at the camera and do this. So that seems to be in the hole. Actually went in easier than I thought. That. I've not got it fully tightened yet, that. I just want to make sure this one isn't cross-threaded. That's going in there smoothly. Quite long bolts, so there's quite a few threads to go. Okay, that's hand tight now, and so is that. I'll just do the bottom one. Again, an extension piece. I might use an extra one as well in a second. If you look down at an angle sort of here between the starter motor and the gap showing you touch, you'll see it. Right. How's is that? So it's just a matter of uh, reconnecting the two cables to here and then reconnecting all your your battery here so we'll get that done 
This battery, by the way, is definitely the best battery I've ever had on it. I've had it 17 years now. I've had quite a few batteries in that 17 years. It seems to eat them. One even went while we're on the Euro trip in France. And I usually get the thinner ones about this sort of wide. The sealed ones, the gel pack ones. This is the old traditional top it up with distilled water in, in here one. But it's physically bigger. It's got much more oomph to turn it over. It's 12 volts, 28 ampere hours. A lot of the thinner ones are only sort of like 12 to 16 or whatever. Um, 180 cold cranking amps and it really spins it over fantastic and it's proved a, a good buy. I've had it for three years now, April 21, and they were on sale in Holford's, absolute bargain, down from uh, normally eight, I think they were 80 quid, down to 10 quid, sorry, 75 is correct on top here, 75 down to 10 quid, they were selling off some uh, stock, brand new, but absolutely brilliant battery, so yeah, definitely recommend that. It physically fits, it's wider this way, as I said, but it still clears the tail cone. And it is a Yuasa, I'll put it on screen as well, a Yuasa 53030, so 53030. Yeah, good battery. Okay, so I'm gonna fire it up now. You might just be able to hear how quick that battery spins, spins the engine over. And uh, I'm going to let it run about 15 minutes or so and then hold the microphone to it and you shouldn't hear any clunks and clangs. Well, like I say, I'll give it a good 15 minutes, get warmed up. Okay, so we've been going about 15 minutes now. Uh, I'm just going to take my mic off and hold it to the alternator. Like I say, I've never filmed it before. I didn't think I was going to be making this video, so I should have done really. But I've been stood here listening for the full 15 minutes and it hasn't clunked once. There's been no clunk, so... So this is with the mic held right up next to it. They never were the uh, smoothest, gentlest, quietest engines these. They are quite a clattery engine, really. Um, I'll hold it round near the injectors. But the noisiest thing you'll find on these is the uh, fuel pump. There's two fuel pumps, a high pressure and a low pressure. And this one here, this is the one that it's sort of like tick, 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 tick. If I hold the mic to it, you'll hear it. So yeah, quite a distinctive noise there. So I'll just show you as well how good it is charging. So like I say, it's hard to demonstrate it on a video being so intermittent, but uh, take my word for it, running it for a good probably about half an hour had it on tick over in all and it didn't do it once and it's audibly better and uh, my mind is is a lot better now set than it was so uh, hopefully for any forthcoming trips we've got some lined up uh it at least the alternator will be a reliable now this next bit i'm just going to show you some of the extra gauges i fitted after my uh, disastrous weekend last year, where, like I say, I broke down, the, it overheated on probably the hottest day of the year, in a traffic jam, on the motorway, surrounded by trucks, the radiator fan packed up. I could hear it actually pack up, squeal, and then clunk and stop. And surely, bit by bit, the temperature went up and up and up, and steam started appearing in the cabin. I luckily got it off the motorway, into a, like a retail part where there was a Holfords, stripped it all down, got it out, topped up the water, found out the fan was jammed solid. 
rung the RAC at about sort of like three, four o'clock. Eight hours later, still hadn't arrived. I was on my own in all weathers, middle of nowhere on the tree top. So like I said, I'll put a link at the end of this for the radiator fan replacement I did and the terrible service by the RAC. So yeah, I would not advise being an RAC. I've totally changed since then. Check out that video for that anyway. But yeah, since then I've put a new brand new radiator fan in an, uh, a, a better sort of quality one. And I've also replaced with a brand new motor, the old assembly, and I carry that round as a spare. So I've got two ready a backup fan as a spare for somebody else if theirs ever goes wrong. And since it happened, just to put my own mind at rest, I put some extra temperature gauges in. I put one in in a manifold near the radiator so I can monitor temperature at the radiator and at the engine by the conventional analog gauge. I've put an extra uh, voltmeter in that shows the, the charge rate is going up when the alternator's going at about 14 volts. So I've got a good check on that. And I've put two air temperature sensors in, one near, near the wheel out in fresh air, measuring the outside ambient temperature, and one just behind the radiator fan. So when the fan kicks in, it blows on that, measuring the air temperature under the bonnet. So I'll quickly show you them now. Like I say, it's irrelevant to this video about the alternator, but you may uh, like uh, the look of some of these uh, dials. So well, let's have a look at that now. So I'm uh, sat in it now, as you can see, and uh, we're on tick over. You can see there is loads of charge going into the battery. If I rev it, you'll see this bit here going right round into the green. These are additional gauges I've fitted myself. It's fully charged battery now, so it'd be charging a lot more if the battery was dud. You'd see this go right round when I rev it. But see it move a bit when I blip it. The temperature gauge, again, we've probably been running about 20 minutes now, just sat in the garage with no airflow through it. We've only reached 82. That's the conventional gauge. That's the additional one I put. This is measured at the engine. This is measuring temperature at the radiator. I did all that, these fitting these gauges in another video if you want to watch that. And then if we click the main power to these additional gauges on, you'll see this one here. It's that dual measurement. Both of it the air temperature. That is the air temperature right behind the radiator in the efflux of the fan 17.8 and 9.7 is the air temperature with the the probe strapped to the very front of the car in fresh air away from any heat if i put my fan override on now you should see this red one go start going up because that's blowing air from the radiator onto the sensor so i'll put the fan override on now uh, instantly you can see that going up because it is blowing onto it but still the engine hasn't the engine temperature gauge hasn't kicked in temperature switch hasn't kicked in it doesn't do this until it's oh sort of like getting onto this one here now you know over 100 ish 103 that's why i like having the uh, separate fan override switch there so hopefully no more clunking from the alternator so there you have it um yeah i do feel more at ease with that uh being able to monitor all that temperature and with the fan override switch i can just click that on anytime i like i don't have to wait for it to get over to it kicks in from the engine at over 100 about 100 to 103 degrees and that that's that's right by the book but you know i'd sooner be turning that fan on around about 90 but anyway that's that so like i say hopefully it has been of some use to i know only scorpion owners to anybody else it's just too specialized and i guarantee i will be back on my normal reviews very very soon still got the the monitor the two uh 
portable monitors to review a good one and a bad one still got some uh, i've got to borrow my daughter's phone to show you a certain issue on on that um so i'll be doing that very very soon and as mentioned at the very, very beginning of this video if i do see that pressure washer at aldi i will be getting one so we will do it on that so loads more reviews coming up whatever takes me fancy you will see it so hopefully for you scorpion owners this has been of some use if it has please give me a thumbs up or if you're not a scorpion owner and you've stuck with it to the end just to have a look please give us a thumbs up it all helps with the uh, youtube figures and i'll be back with me normal reviews very very soon if you haven't already subscribed and you'd like to it would be fantastic if you could by clicking the little picture here of the shed once you've done that click the bell icon below and you'll be alerted to any uploads as soon as i do them so catch you for the next one which will be my usual stuff like i say very very soon thanks for watching this one again bye for now